What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am Jonas McCann. Thanks for joining me. In today's video, we're going to talk about my brand new to me, original 1987 Yamaha Big Bear. And there's actually a really cool story behind this bike. Stick around if you want to hear it. For anyone who knows anything about ATVs back in the early 80s and late 80s, you guys probably recognize this thing. This is the Big Bear, the Yamaha four-wheel drive, full-time four-wheel drive, 350 air-cooled engine. I mean, these things were pretty well tanks back for the day. Uh, and in today's video, I, my plan is to put a whole bunch of parts into this thing. Not that it needs a whole bunch, but I want to bring it back up to what was once running really well. I mean, this thing runs pretty good as it is, but I also picked up a whole bunch of parts with that, and here we have it. So we've got the front rack with actually looks to be a boat rack set up. We've got some extra pegs with some foot protection. Over here we have our extra exhaust pipe with a heat shield a couple of fender protectors with some pegs we're going to try and sl uh, slap those on too because that'd be nice and of course a couple of newer stuff i mean we definitely need to change the brakes on this because the brakes are almost non-existent we got a spark arrester that's a boot for the uh, rear drive shaft an oil filter and of course well we're going to change the spark plug just for good measure so let's get into it so you guys might have been wondering why a spark arrester. I mean, that's not something that's common on these things. But uh, for some reason, this one here, it's uh, it's gone. It's completely rattling in there, and it's loud. I mean, uh, if you like something loud, it sounds like a shotgun every time you hit the gas, this is the bike for you. But uh, maybe I'm getting older. I like to keep it quiet. So, uh, of course, got a bit of a slow leak on this side too. But it did come with four reasonably good tires that are original uh so we're going to get started by changing that spark arrestor but before we do i want to make you i want to hear that quad i want you guys to hear it because it's pretty loud okay, so i don't have a battery on this thing but which is something we're going to have to do later but i'm going to pull it over go full choke here got some gas Let's see what it sounds like free without uh, breaking the bolt because I'll bet you she's been in there quite a while if you guys are doing this sometimes you go back and forth a little bit you can kind of loosen it off a little bit yeah, there she goes not bad she's going okay I might actually get to see that nice so I was talking about a pretty cool story behind this quad and as the story is this was actually my grandfather's quad he bought this brand new back in 1987 and I remember getting the first maiden voyage ride on this thing and then from there it went on to my uncles and then on, on to me See if we can break that free. I think I'm just gonna end up mangling the heck out of this. We're gonna try and pop it straight from the back here. Okay, so after using some heat, after using some more penetrating oil and a lot of hammering. With a bigger hammer, it's still there. So I decided the next course of action is to just remove the whole muffler and work on, on the bench. So got one last bolt here to remove. And that 
should set it free. And let's see. Ooh, that's so warm. Ooh. There it goes. Right. Cool. So we're going to be able to knock that out. You can definitely hear that baffling. Oh, come on. Come on. Well, that's not good. That baffle's not going to do anything. But, let's always look at the bright side. I have a welder, and I have some tin. So we're going to have to do some of that. Anyways, let's get to the bench. See if we can get this baffle out. Okay, so now we got a secure device. I'm going to try and beat it some more. Try and get that out. I don't have my big bike set up. My big bike's over here. That's supposed to be bolted over into the center of the floor over there, which I have all the apparatus for doing it. I just haven't drilled the holes. And actually, here's another cool story. This big honking bike was also my grandfather's. So that's kind of cool. Uh, let's see here. Which is the best way? Okay, so I won, guys. It's finally out. Actually, the uh, spark arrestor didn't look too bad. It's too f a little bit uh, carboned up, but I guess the issue is that it fell off of the uh, fell off the nozzle there at the end. So I'm going to replace it anyways. And I suppose I should have just replaced the whole muffler because these are still available from Yamaha. Because yeah, this is uh, this is pretty bad. But I am trying to do this on a budget. I mean, uh, I'm trying to bring this back to life as I remember it uh, 30 years ago, 30 plus years ago. So I guess the next course of action, I'm going to put the I'm going to put the spark arrestor in place, secure it, and then get onto some uh, quick welding. Before you do any type of welding, make sure you got nothing around like, well, empty cans of oil or anything flammable for that matter and, you know, knock over a bunch of stuff like that. So what I've done is I've taken little pieces of tin, I've molded it around as well as I could and I'm going to stitch it with the welder all the way around because this is pretty thin, you can't put too much heat. But I'm going to see what I can do, try and make it look as best as I can, of course, on a budget, which is what we're all about, right? So, enough talking, let's get to it. Okay, it's all done. All right, it's not perfect, but uh, it'll do. I mean, come on over here and check it for yourself. Here and check it for yourself. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. Yeah, those welds are pretty bad. They're pretty ugly, but uh, I can explain. Uh, I mean, number one. I'm not a licensed welder and number two this is actually really thin material so I kept burning through so I ended up uh, having to stitch it like I was saying so you basically take your MIG welder here you do a spot weld wait for it to cool do another spot weld wait for it to cool I don't have any gas on this uh, so I'm using a MIG and flux wire uh, but comment below if you guys would have came up with an easier way to do this, I mean, other than, of course, buying another muffler, I'm trying to keep it on the budget. Um, I think if I would have had torches, I would have went with uh, braze welding. But uh, anyway, comment below. Tell me what you think. So let's give this a quick coat of paint after we 
grind off some of that ugly looking weld and we'll put it back on the bike, see what it sounds. Okay, so while that muffler is drying, uh, why don't we move on to something a little bit more simple by changing the spark plug. So this one here happens to be a DR8ES-L and it's an 18 millimeter socket. I mean, uh, normally you get either a 13 16 or a 5 8 but no, nope. this time we're going to go with a different size socket. We're going to go with an 18 millimeter. Down here. Actually, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it looks actually pretty decent. I mean, probably one of the reasons why it fires up so easy. It's still in good shape, but maybe I'll keep it for on the trail. Uh, I'm going to put a new one on. So, something to note is this one here has a crush washer. So, unlike certain other motors or cars or whatever, they don't have that. They'll have a tapered end to the uh, spark plug. These ones here, you have to go a little bit more than just your snug. And sometimes it's actually written on the box, but it's about, yeah, right there. It's about half an inch, half a turn once it's tight. Sock it back on there. Yeah, it's about half a turn. Okay, so the muffler is just about dry. Let's see if we can slide it back into place fairly easily here. Oh, I can't wait to hear this thing. Hopefully it sounds sweet. An awful lot of work into doing that, but also very rewarding. All right, the moment of truth. Let's see what we can hear. Hopefully it's a bit quieter. Probably the sleeve cylinder. These things had uh, hydraulic drum brakes in the front and it had just a disc brake in the back but once we get there I'll show you. It only had one pad that actually activated onto the one side of the disc. Really thick disc. Different setup but it worked. So let's just see what we can do in here. Maybe it's just a lack of adjustment. stage that but I didn't <laughs> okay so let's see what happens yeah there we go so we got some pressure I don't know if you guys can see that everything's moving well come on closer so we got a bit of crud in here but overall it's not too bad and if I apply the brakes so what I think what I'm gonna do I'm going to adjust these and hope for the best. Now, to adjust them, um, I haven't worked on drum brakes in a long time, but I'm going to have to find uh, right here. See this? We have an adjustment screw. So we're going to take that out a little bit, which is going to raise the shoe at this end. And then there's probably one on the opposite side. And uh, yes, there is. There's another one right over here. I'm going to adjust that slightly so that when we put the drum back on, 
It's just to say a snug fit and hopefully we'll have some breaks. Clean up a little bit of that dirt so I can get in there. I'm going to try and do this evenly on both sides. I'm going to count the notches. That actually feels pretty good. So. Look at that, now we got a bit of pressure. We got some pressure. Hey, we got some brakes. Let's go check the other side now. So unfortunately this side, unlike the first side we were looking at, uh, it's got no liners. This is completely bare metal. Uh, I'm going to have to get some more of course. So there's really not much I can do for now. Okay, so that's going to stop me here for the front brakes. Let's go to the back and see what we can do there. Hey guys, it's the next day and I've moved on to the rear brakes. So let's go see what we have in there. Okay, so I've already taken the liberty of removing the tire and then removing the actual spline hub. That just kind of sits there like that. Remove the big nut in the middle, right over here. And that gains you access to this. And then you can remove your dust shield. Three little bolts, or sorry, screws go around. And I've already also Remove the three nuts that hold the cam assembly in place. So we're going to show you what I found here. So there's going to be a little rod here that comes out. There you go. It'll come out like that. Perfect. And uh, I'm not sure why, at least on this side, the puck is actually pretty mint. I mean, look at that. There's still lots of meat on here. If I compare it to the other one, the newer ones I just bought, this is really good shape. There's barely any rust on this. It looks like it just got done. So then I thought, well, what could be the issue as to why we're not getting any brakes? Well, this could be one. I mean, when we put this cam assembly back into place, um, nothing seems to be lining up here. So I think that maybe when it was reassembled, it wasn't assembled in the right spot. So I'm going to take this apart, reassemble it, maybe clean up the disc. And this is what I was talking about, guys. I mean, this is actually a fairly thick disc. And it kind of, it doesn't even have a floating caliper. I mean, so I'm going to take the caliper apart, see what's like on the inner side here, or sorry, the outer side of the puck. And we'll go from there. All right, so I've removed the caliper right over here. And, uh, yeah, both sides of this pad are in really good shape. I mean, let's check this out. There's the outer, sorry, the inner and the outer. I mean, they both have a lot of meat. So I think, they're not even rusted. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back together. And I'm just going to try and readjust it over here on the spline. Okay, so I've got it all back together, and it turns out that there actually isn't a spline in here like I assumed. As you can tell, this is just two flat bars. So, the way you adjust this, if I can get this back on, is you turn this screw in, holding pressure on here. I'm going to show you. Watch this adjuster, or this indicator. It's going to slowly make its way back as I, there it goes. So I'm going to line it up with the mark, tighten up the jam nut, and call it a day. That's how you do that. Okay guys, that's going to be it for today. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit more work in the next video, so stay tuned for that. And yes, behind me, I still have the Subaru. 
The engine is still sitting on the bench over there. We're going to get to it, but I have another review video that I have coming up that's going to help free up some, uh, some money to get that engine repaired back into the Subaru and running. So stay tuned for that. Again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time.